Welcome back. Welcome to chapter four, performance under conditions of change. In this chapter, I will tell you a little bit about why organizations change, how they change, and what we can do to organize it in a smooth and effective way. Uh, this very first clip on chapter four is about types and causes of organization change. So why do organizations change? And I will introduce to introduce you to a range of change theories uh, that will probably help you to better understand the landscape of change research that we're talking about today. So some examples of change. If you just read the newspapers, you, you turn on the first page and you'll see you come across many, many organizations that are trying to change things, trying to change the strategy, maybe downsizing, maybe moving their production or their services to another country. So these are all instances of changes in organizations. And some way or another, they affect people working there and they also affect how effective in the end the organization is. So change, changes are oftentimes meant to make organizations better, but do they? So that's the central topic of this short clip. So. Just a quick overview of the types of organizational changes that you may come across in the literature. And if I read them out loud, so buying another business, acquisition, or merging together with another company, uh, trying to expand your business to another country, or try to in, uh, install a new line of products or services. Uh, sometimes changes involve a culture change, so moving from a more bureaucratic organization to a customer service organization, or trying to make uh, a, a, an organization culture where employees have more say. Um, implementing new technology or systems, uh, the intranet or uh, digital uh, systems to, uh, to transfer kind of knowledge and products, changes all the time in post to organizations. Uh, trying to, to improve the way people work in organizations by re-engineering uh, the processes, for example, making a back office and a front office rather than have just one office. Um, and finally, sometimes also the restructuring of organizational units. Dispose of some, merge others, so even within the organization, people are shifted and moved around a lot in order to eventually improve the organization as a whole. So. Change is obviously something that happens a lot in organizations. So is it always smooth and without any problems? No. Woodrow Wilson, in the, um, during the, uh, the Great Recession, already uh, found that if you want to, improve, want to change the way a country is organizing, and he was, uh, he was of the New Deal, so he was trying to, uh, uh, to implement all the... the um, initiatives to, to help people back to work and to, uh, to combat a big economic uh, depression. He stated, if you want to make enemies, try to change something. So he indicates that oftentimes there's a lot of opposition to change. So there's something that you need to take with you if you want to do a change, that there's probably going to be people who don't like the change. So if there's opposition and if there's always people not happy, then why do changes still happen? Well, it's maybe the question is too obvious, but just to give you some clues, uh, there are forces that drive change from outside the organization. So for example, a society is changing, there's more diversity or uh, the workforce is aging. Um, the people expect different things. So that may cause a pressure to an organization to adjust their policies, for example, to hire or to keep all the workers on board. Um, technological changes, so we already mentioned that some change could involve technological improvements, but effect, in effect, continuous change happening in the outside world also affects what organizations can do and should do, and cause a big pressure to, uh, to keep on board there. Uh, economic change, think about um Com uh, competition. Also think about, for example, financial crisis or uh, skyrocket high inflation things. These are all things that happen outside the organization that I affect the organization itself. Political changes, uh, legal regulations, and also the broader environment, so ecological change. The these all affect the way organizations uh, operate. 
and how they should adapt to that. <coughs> Inside the organization, there's also a lot of things happen that, uh, that can drive uh, clues for a change to be implemented. So starting, for example, with performance problems, something goes bad in one department, it should be improved, so what happens? So building on this idea of, um, uh, of innovating work processes. Uh, innovation at large also. Uh, human resources, we can uh, uh, have a need to change the organization because there's simply no people on the labor market anymore, so we need to maybe change the production in such a way that we can um, deal with that. Uh, things like uh, uh, employee participation, so generate ideas for, from workers to see how the organization can maybe improve. Leadership is very interesting as a cause for internal change. Um, oftentimes you see that when a new leader comes on board, they feel a need to change something in the organization, sometimes even with a real you know, factual need for do a change, but just because there's a new leader, they want to change something. Um, conflicts and finally safety might also uh, cause issues in an organization that need to be addressed. The big question for our course is to try and see how human resource management can help organizations and their employees to uh, compete and survive in an environment of continuous change. So the premise is here that Changes there, it, is, it will happen. And how can we as an organization, as human resource management and as individual employees cope with these changes in such a way that we'll be happy and thriving? In this clip, the most important concept that you should remember is the difference between planned change and continuous change. Planned change is the idea that there's a situation which is now and a plan for a future situation, which is to come, the East and the Sol, and that we can actually make little steps towards uh, the new situation. So taking all employees on board, changing the process, buying new software, doing whatever it takes, and just move the entire entity to the next situation. This assumes that it's something that you can plan, and therefore it's also called planned change. In contrast, there's a load of theories that de uh, debate that it's possible in today's environment to actually plan for change. Changes just happen. You can't predict what happens in the outside world. It's better to be prepared for continuous change. So when, when change happens, those organizations who are best capable to quickly adjust and to grasp the benefits from this new situation, they will prosper. In the next two clips, I will take you uh, by the hand and take you through the uh, planned change and continuous change theories. Um, in the final clip, in clip 11, I will talk about how change in organizations also requires employees to continuously change. And also, I'll fix, since it's uh, about human resource management, I'll explicate how organizations can help employees to adapt to change and also to benefit their own careers. Thank you.